Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is an English translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Maulana Kamaru Zama Saab Dhamad Barakatuhum, which took place on Friday night, the 4th of Ramadan, 1445 corresponding with the English date, 15th of March, 2024. This particular majlis took place after the Taraweeh Salat at Darul Ma'arif, Kareli, Ilahabad, UP, India. Hazarwala starts of this majlis by quoting the verses of the Quran Majid, Alif, Lam, Mim, Dalik al Kitabu la Rayba fi Hudalil Muttaqeen. Hazarwala is saying, friends, elders, and dear ones, for many years, this practice of giving a talk, majlis, spiritual discourse after the Taraweeh Salat was our ma'mul and our practice. Because of my sickness and weakness, I did not have that courage due to which there was no majlis for a few days from myself. I came to know generally and specifically from Mali Muhammad Abdullah that he's saying that the silsila and this pattern that you were giving talks this chain that was carrying on for so many years we should continue with that even though it is just for a few minutes when I heard that some type of courage and himmat came into me and this also that the people would be happy with just a but never mind just with that but but if people can make amal, Morana Abrarul Haq, Morana Muhammad Ahmad Sab, Morana Ali Mia, they would all come to Baitul Ma'arif. And that's why I say that you should people should also go to Baitul Ma'arif and have a look at that place. That was the original uh, markaz. Morana Ali Mia also gave a muhtasar and a concise talk. Morana Abrarul Haq also. Our ulama have also given concise talks. But my dua is that in this concise talk, Allah Ta'ala make it such that uh, there is dini and ilmi benefit. Now here, in this particular hadith, an Anasin radiyallahu ta'ala an, narrated from Anas radiyallahu ta'ala an, he says that, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned rather he in, in, uh, uh, engaged with the Sahaba interacted with them istifsar asked them a question that Hal tadruna tell me do you know man ajwadu judan that who is the most generous you know Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to also adopt the style and he would ask questions and there were great ulama that would sit there. It was like an imtihan. Ya Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also asking this question. And our ulama have also adopted this type of style from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So here the question is asked. There is a style that's learned from Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who is being addressed is asked a question. If he knows it, well and good, he'll answer, and if not, he'll learn something. Now the Sahaba, their style was this. Now look at what answer they gave. Their mazak, their nature, their makeup was this. Look at the tarbiyat that was given to them. They answered, Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and His Rasul know best. Now this was their alam of fanaiyat and uh, annihilation of the nafs. Sabse pehle, the first thing was that annihilation of the ilm. And that's what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had taught. This is what he taught to the Sahaba. This was the sabak he gave them. So not knowing and acknowledging that, that I don't know. This is also one khas ilm. And listen, this style of sawal and jawab, this year also is something amazing because it is awqa fin nafs. It settles down very, very deep into the heart. 
So the question asked there, Nabi Sallallahu asked the Sahaba, Hal tadruna man ajwadu judan? Do you know, tell me, who is the most generous? The Sahaba replied, Allahu wa rasooluhu a'lam. Allah and his Rasul know, know best. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi then went on to give the answer by saying, Allah Ta'ala ajwadu judan. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is the most generous. Look at this. Allah Ta'ala blessed us with existence. Allah blessed us with Iman. Allah Ta'ala, is this something small regarding the generosity of Allah that He has granted us existence and after that He made, He blessed us with Iman? Allahu Akbar. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam thereafter goes on to say, Thumma ana ajwadu bani Adam. Thereafter, I am the most generous of all the children of Adam. Now here, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam exposed himself and we learned uh, most probably uh, this year is mentioned in Mirqat. You know, we say that saying Anna, we should refrain from that. Yes, but we have to look at the occasion. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is making izhar of haqiqat. He is telling the facts of the matters, educating his ummah, that af after Allah, there is no one more generous than me. Yes, on other occasions, it was taught that uh, we should not say ana. Yes, certain occasions, we have to say ana. When a sahabi knocked on the door, and when it was asked, who's there? And then he said, it's me, it's me. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him that, listen, don't say me. Because the person who's inside doesn't know who is me. Me could be anyone. Rather, say your name. Say your name. Introduce yourself there. That would be the right thing on that particular occasion. Now look at Allah Ta'ala's generosity. He did not make us animals. He made us human. After making us human, He did not make us Yahud. He did not make us Nasara. Rather, He made us Musliman, Muslims. And we should make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. That Allah made us Muslim. Allah established and entrenched that Iman in our hearts. Allah put the importance of Salat and Raza in our hearts. Allah gave us, is it not Allah's generosity? That he allowed us here to gather, to gather here for, for his sake. Is this not a gift from his side that he pulled us, brought us here and he gathered us here? This is also the charisma of his jude and generosity. It is the manifestation of the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Nabi sallallahu is asking that question. And is there any shortage of the uloom? And the ma'arif of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? No. In front of him, it was munkashif. It was there, it was open. So Allah Ta'ala made us Muslim and kept us on the works of deen. So the first, most generous, is that of Allah. Second, is that of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And thirdly, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, وَأَجْوَدُهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ And the most generous of all after me, is Rajulun Alima Ilman Fanasharahu, a person who knows some knowledge, and thereafter he doesn't keep it to himself, rather he spreads it and he lets it go on. Such a person, Nabi Sallallahu is speaking about him, Yati Yawmal Qiyamati Amiran Wahdahu, he will come on the day of Qiyamat outstanding as an Amir, as a prominent person, a person of authority. أو قال أمة واحدة. He will come as an ummah on its own. That is the honor that Allah Taala will give him. So Allah Taala has given ilm, and what type of ilm? That ilm that lets us reach the ma'arifat of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That is actually ilm. So therefore the ulama should also understand what a great ni'mat this is. So that person will come on the day of Qiyamah with all those people who are affiliated with him. He will come with his students, all those people who learn from him, his muttabi'een, his uh, murideen, etc. 
What is, what can I say about myself? If you people were not here, I would have done this, that, and I would have went to go and sleep. But you people came, so it was the means of tawfiq for me. So it put me on to work, and I am passing on something to you. Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of fulfilling this haq. I am more in need than anybody else. Nevertheless, it was said to me that give some bayan. I am sitting now and I am reading this hadith to you. Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq. You know, tawfiq is something very, very great. People would leave and they would say to Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, Hazrat, we're going, but we'll come back in Ramadan. And then when Ramadan would come, they would not arrive and then Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah Sahib would look at me and say see these people said they are coming and now they did not come this matter is all about that of tawfiq inspiration and guidance from the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which makes all of this possible so whichever work Allah ta'ala has handed over to us we should do it in a most beautiful manner now it's obvious you people are here and you don't have the luxuries which you have at home and you people are just so happy like that it is a great fortune for me and for my children to serve you that you people have come for the sake of Dean and it is obvious for Dean sometimes some and some mehnat you have to make now this month actually is Wali Saz Mayna. It is a month that will actually make you a uh, Wali. Wali Banane Wala Mayna. So, Allahu Wali Yulladina Amanu, that's Wilayat, Nafsa Wilayat, every person has. But in the month of Ramadan, it is very, very special and the barakat is more. We should make shukar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah ta'ala blessed us with Ramadan. Hazrat Mawlana Muhammad Ahmad Saab, he used to give majlis every day in the month of Ramadan. And he would even go on to say and make dua himself that make dua that Allah ta'ala, Allah ta'ala spares us for the next Ramadan. Allah blesses us with the next uh, Ramadan. So the month is so amazing and each day comes with its fuyus and the barakat and the night is so much more different. The nights are different, the days are different. Towards the end of Ramadan, Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to go on to say that achieve something, do something, karamat banao, make it of a, a great benefit to yourself. He had so much of fikr for Islam for himself and for his subordinates, those who are with him and under him. Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of keeping the ta'limat of the buzurgan deen in front of us. So why has Ramadan come? So that Allah walo ki ta'alluk, Allah se jur jai. So that the people of Allah, the men of Allah, their connection with Allah can be reconnected, it can become stronger and uh, they can move forward. So the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan. So actually the essence is that of the Quran more than Ramadan. Ramadan became blessed because of that of the Quran. Read it up. It is in, in Bayanul Quran. So when the Quran was revealed in Ramadan, Ramadan became blessed. And because of the Quran was so great, Allah Ta'ala made fasting compulsory as thanksgiving to the Qur'an that we have been blessed with something so great as the Qur'an so fasting had been made for us as shukriya, shukran to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for blessing us with that of the Qur'an Hazrat Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala used to say that you want to know what to do Establish a maktab and go and teach there. So the hadith again, let's go over it. Rawahu al-Bayhaqi fi shu'bi al-Iman an Anasin radiyallahu ta'ala an qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hal tadruna man ajwadu judan do you know who is the most generous? The Sahaba said, Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on to say, Allahu Ta'ala ajwadu judan. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the most uh, generous. 
ثم انا اجود بني ادم ذي افتر ايم ذا موست جنرس اوف اول ذا تشيلدرن اوف ادم واجودهم من بعدي رجل علم علما فنشره ذا موست جنرس افتر مي از ذا ون ذا بيرسون who has knowledge the alim din the person has some type of knowledge and he takes that knowledge and he passes it on he will be so celebrated on the day of qiyama that he will come on the day of qiyama as an amir as a distinguished person wahdahu alone unique or the rawi then goes on to say ummatan wahidatan as an ummat so he would come and there would be so many people with him all those people who learned from him those who followed him those who were linked to him so here you people came you came and in gujarat this is quite common but here it is not so common and when you people carry out ibadat here stay up at night etc the tremendous atharat that it has it is ama- amazing so here you oh, people are also muballigh and we understand this to be your great favor upon us allah taala accept it make dua to allah subhanahu wa taala that he blesses us with sihat and afiyat ilahi maqsood man tu hi wa rizai tu muhabbat wa ma'rifat khud bi dah oh allah my objective is you and your pleasure that's therefore bless me with your ma'rifat and your muhabbat allah taala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of making qadar of the month of ramadan carrying out tilawat carrying out a uh, uh, dhikr and to stay up and to do more than we do in other days this dua is tremendous we should read it uh, it is the khas uh, wazifa of the mashayikh in naqshbandiya and in between our azkar We should also read this dua. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas sami'ul alim wa tub alayna innaka antat tawwabur rahim bi hurmati sayyidin nabiyyil karim sallallahu alayhi wa